Hey guys, welcome back to another episode by Brown World to finally another day vlog. I know probably none of you were just like, oh man, where's another day vlog? Um, because I don't think any of you watch my day vlogs. Um, but uh, yeah, so I have not done one of these in forever. Like, when I think about it, some of this stuff is from before I started a lot of things in my life, and it's like from a long time ago. So I can't remember the exact time I did my last day vlog, but it was a while ago. Um, some of the stuff in this day vlog is pretty irrelevant now, actually. Um, but I'm still going to show it, or do it anyway. Um, so yeah, so first off, two reviews. As you guys know, I always read them off of papers um, that are typed. One of them I'm not going to do that actually with now. Um, I'm just going to do it, because um, I, I didn't feel like I really needed like a full review. Um, just uh, with what, um, just with what I wanted to say right off the bat. Uh, with that. Um, so yeah, so basically if you guys are wondering why I haven't done a day vlog in a while, of course there's been a lot of stuff going on in Fortnite why, um, lately as you guys can probably tell because the past three videos in a row have been Fortnite. Um, I believe there won't be another Fortnite video until the Fortnite Season 6 results, which that's not for almost another month. Um, so yeah, so if you guys are sick of uh, Fortnite videos, probably won't be another one until then. Um, I don't think so. Uh, but other than that, as you guys know, one of the last, uh, one of my more previous videos, um, was of course Taco. You guys know him. He was actually in the last day vlog. He was chilling on my bed. And as you guys know, he all, or he did end up sadly passing away. We had to put him down. It was out of nowhere, because as I explained it in that video, um, through text and everything, he didn't really have anything showing that. He was, I mean, he was getting old. He was about 12 years old, we were thinking. Um... But he didn't really show anything about getting old, so yeah, so that really, really sucks. So we've also been kind of getting over that and everything. Um, but I will show you some new things with that in this video. Um, so yeah, so um, if you want to leave any nice comments about Taco in the description of this video or that Taco video, if you haven't seen that video, definitely please watch it. Um, I put a lot of time in editing into that for my boy. Um, so yeah, so definitely make sure to check that out. So first off... Um, this is the review for Venom, which is pretty surprising, because you guys know my, my, like, typed movie reviews, they're always, like, pages long. This is not even a full page long. Um, so yeah, so I don't even know if it's still in theaters. Um, it went into theaters, I believe, early October, so it's, I mean, it's early November now. Um, so yeah, but for my first review is Daredevil Season 3. I saw the trailer for it, but I've been completely out of line with these Netflix Marvel shows. Um, of course, Marvel is like, I, I don't know when, I think it's early 2019, they're making their own kind of Netflix streaming service, um, and I don't know if they're going to keep on carrying on with like the shows that they're doing right now on Netflix, or if they're going to bring them over to the Disney one, but the thing is, is if they're bringing them over to Disney, and you guys have seen the Netflix shows, they're not going to be the same, because they're, they're a lot more gory, um, I mean, they're about like, uh, like, Zack Snyder, or, yeah, they're about, like, old Zack Snyder DC movies, like Watchmen and stuff. Like, they're pretty darn violent and inappropriate for, uh, or, like, MCU viewers. Uh, so, yeah, so, guys, Daredevil Season 3, as you guys know, all the Netflix TV shows that I'm looking at my posters right now, but all the ones I've watched myself, um, because I've not watched all of them, except for some scenes and stuff from some of the other ones, um, I have watched, um, the, the first one I watched, kind of a weird one to start with, uh, was Iron Fist Season 1. A lot of people say it's the worst uh, Netflix show season of all time. Um, so yeah, so I watched Iron Fist Season 1. Um, I also watched The Defender Season 1. Um, the Punisher Season 1. You guys know I love that. That was my favorite Netflix show of all time so far, or Netflix um, Marvel show. Um, and Jessica Jones Season 2. Um, so yeah, so I watched this one. This one, usually I go in with kind of some spoilers, I kind of know what the, like, uh, some characters are, but with Punisher, I mean, I didn't really know who Jigsaw was, but I didn't really know he was going to be kind of the main villain, or kind of setting up Jigsaw. This one, I had no idea Bullseye was going to be in it. I watched the trailer, that's pretty much all. I went in, and when I saw him ricochet a bullet off of a, um, like a stop sign into someone, and then I saw him throw a magazine, uh, um, a pistol magazine at someone's head and it ricocheted off their head into another guy and knocked them both out. Um, I was watching it with my dad and I was just like, I think that's Bullseye. Like, I, I didn't even watch it, but his name in the show is Benjamin Point Dexter. Um, but yeah, at the end of the show, if you guys don't know, um, Kingpin ended up, um, smashing his back. Um, so he's getting, like, spine surgery and then it, he, like, open, it, like, goes down to his face and then zooms in 
and he opens his eyes and there's like the little bullseye logo on one of his eyes so yeah so um that's why i'm really hoping they kind of um get with these netflix shows real quick because like of course i really want to punish her season two i really want to see where they're going to take the whole jigsaw character and everything but now for daredevil season four i really want to see where the like uh bullseye goes and everything um because uh punisher i mean like they're really getting into the the big stuff now because punisher um jigsaw one is one of his bigger enemies and bullseye is pretty much daredevil's like arch enemy so really want to see that going on um but yeah so overall i really think um it wasn't i still like punisher season one the, be the best so far but um daredevil season th and then the defenders season one but daredevil season three was probably my favorite one um out of the, all the seasons and stuff i've seen so far um i of course kingpin is our uh uh wilson fisk um slash kingpin played by vincent d'onofrio um who's been on movies like jurassic world um but also mainly um full metal jacket um he is uh, um said to be one of like the best mcu villains um and i think he really is he's pretty darn terrifying um but yeah so again he was really really good last time he was like a big big character was daredevil season one but season two he was in there kind of with the introducing punisher and stuff but he was really really good once again and how he just like creepily worked his way up th um just like kind of working um and using the fbi to kind of get himself like just secretly back up into his jail that ended up becoming like his penthouse and everything and um also how they're kind of setting setting his wife up to be an enemy soon like in the comics um and of course also like i i um like um Benjamin Poindexter, like, he was a really kind of freaky little, um, boy, and he kind of grew up to still be freaky, and he's, he's definitely one of the more kind of terrifying, creepy people we've seen in the MCU, so, um, him, uh, um, Benjamin Poindexter slash, um, Bullseye and Billy Russo slash, um, uh, Jigsaw, I cannot wait to see more of those villains, so, yeah, so just a quick little thing, um, I also like to see, because this is a, um, one of our anticipated ones since the Defenders, because you guys don't know, at the end of the Defenders, the building collapsed, and the only ones in there left were, like, of course, the bad guys, and then Daredevil and Elektra. There was no, I mean, there's talk about Elektra in the season, but nothing more on her. Um, but, yeah, so we were all excited to see how um, there's kind of, like, a comic line of Daredevil being, like, resurrected or whatever, and that's kind of what this season was kind of going off of and everything, but also just, like, uh karen page's character like she was a pretty she was a pretty cool character in this season also like just everyone became pretty much ev everyone it wasn't even just like the main hero uh daredevil he was pretty darn good in the season also um but also just like the side characters that are normally just like there to be characters like they really kind of came up and like i mean she's like taking on missions of her own now and she like uh face to face one-on-one -on -one confronted um kingpin she like these people are assaulting a woman she goes over there and brings out a handgun and stuff it was pretty around crazy so i i overall that season was really really good definitely check it out if you haven't yet and yes i do know iron fist season two and luke cage season two or three um are out on netflix i don't i'm not gonna i, I don't think i'm gonna watch either of those um but uh, yeah i'm mainly just interested um jessica jones i don't know if i'm gonna watch any more going on season two was all right but not amazing i know season one was probably better um but uh yeah so really i'm only interested in like the defenders punisher and daredevil honestly um but yeah so now well, let's get on to the main thing the my finally review for venom um so yeah so i actually went and saw this i believe the opening weekend i wasn't insanely excited for this i didn't know if i was gonna go see it in theaters um i also of course um <laughs> Uh, I've, I've got to say, I'm also 17 now. My birthday was, um, of course, October 23rd. Um, so, yeah, so I went and saw this, and I was saying, it's going to be my last rated R movie that my mom and dad have to take me to before I can go and see him by myself. But literally until, I believe, the day before I saw this, I thought it was rated R, but apparently at some point they made it so it wasn't rated R because they were saying, like, ooh, Deadpool 1 and 2 and Logan, look how big successes those were, and those are rated R superhero movies, but, like, I guess they just took that back because they thought maybe they'd make more money if they could have kids get in. Not too long, honestly, of a review. So, yeah, so getting right into this. Um, uh, oh, yeah, honestly, why I wasn't too excited for this is because 
um, of course, Spider-Man 3. Um, but Tom Hardy is definitely a lot better than Topher Grace as Venom, so I was not, I was excited about that. Um, but honestly, just from, like, the, the trailer, just, like, the, I'll talk about it more in this review, but, um, just some stuff in there I wasn't too excited about, so yeah, so let's just get into it. So, Venom is directed by Ruben Fleischer and is Sony's first attempt at working with the Spider-Man franchise since they decided to share the rights with, with Marvel back on, a Cap on Captain America Civil War and beyond. Although, I did not notice anything whatsoever that could be connecting this to the MCU secretly like it has been theorized. Um, it stars Tom Hardy as Eddie Brock slash Venom, Riz Ahmed as, as Carlton Drake slash Riot, Michelle Williams as Anne Wang, Reed Scott as Dr. Dan Lewis, and Jenny Slate as Dr. Dora Skirth. So basically, it is about Car Carlton Drake Science and Space Company Life Foundation sending a few astronauts to space to retrieve symbiotes uh, so they can use them as a protective suit for humans to soon move them to other planets. And Eddie Brock is the lead uh, reporter for a journalist company and goes against what everyone else was telling him and tries to expose, expose Carlton during their interview on TV. So he ends up getting fired and his girlfriend Anne breaks up with him as he finds Dora at a market and finds out from her that they are doing their tests out on um, the homeless the homeless people of San Francisco. And so when and so when they take one of his friends that was homeless, Dora helps him sneak sneak in and he rescues her, but then the Venom uh, symbiote attaches to Eddie. And so for the rest of the movie, Venom and Eddie bond and set up rules, and Anne with her new boyfriend Dan try to help Eddie. Until Carlton gets Dora to confess and then traps her with a symbiote. Um, and and tra traps her with a symbiote anyway. And then he ends up getting one from a symbiote that was uh, the first to that was first to attach to a host, uh, which then went through a few hosts, including a medic, an old woman, and then a little girl. That then broke into the Life Foundation and gave it to Carlton. And then once the Venom symbiote leaves Eddie, Carlton interrogates him unsuccessfully until he transforms into the symbiote Riot. And later on, a lot more employees turn on Carlton until he goes it alone, and then Venom and Raya have a, have a battle um, while the symbiote rocket is launching, and they both try to tear off each other's suits. So yeah, overall, for my pros, first off, without a doubt, Tom Hardy as Venom instead of Topher Grace was already 100% better. And I also liked how they are already introducing more symbiotes from the Marvel Universe instead of just Venom, like Riot, Carnage, She Venom, etc. I also liked how the symbiotes are separate beings and have conversations with their host and even sometimes having their head come off uh, their back to be face to face. And that led to some pretty funny moments, especially the part where Venom tells Eddie to escape from a tower by jumping out of the window and he disagrees and then it cuts to him waiting for the elevator and Venom just um, calls him a P-U-S-S-Y. <laughs> and I also like an Eminem song that he made for this movie called Venom that played during the credits. Um, and he also on, I believe, Saturday Night, or not Saturday Night Live, one of the late shows, um, they actually, like, lit up the whole Empire State Building, and, like, he performed, like, while going up to the top, and that was a pretty darn big, and I can imagine it was pretty expensive to get that going. Um, so, yeah, so, uh, and lastly, how the first end credit scene is Eddie going, uh, to a prison for an interview with a serial killer who is writing, Welcome, Eddie, in blood when the guard lets him in. And he talks to him and ends by saying, and when I get out of here, which I will, there's going to be carnage. Um, CS, so yes, that was one of my favorite symbiotes and pretty much Venom's arch enemy, Carnage, with the host, Cletus Cassidy. And the second one is a sneak peek at Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. But now for my cons. First off, this was supposed to be Sony's first big rated R superhero movie. And I thought it still was until about two days um, before I went and saw it. When I when I figured out that it was um or and then I figured out that uh, they supposedly cut out 40 minutes of the movie to keep it PG-13, and a lot of people, including me, thought that it would have been a lot better if they really showed stuff, uh, like not only showing the body after Venom bites people's head off heads off uh, multiple different times, etc., but also a lot of the acting was not too great. The villain of Carlton Drake slash Riot was all right, but not great. The romance between Eddie and Anne was very fast, forced, and underdeveloped. A lot of the CGI was really bad, and it was very dark for a lot of the movie. Um, and the two symbiotes that we well, we see fully in this movie are Venom, who is pitch black with grayish veins, and Riot, who is dark gray. And also back to that cut forty minutes. It really shows. Probably my main problem with this movie is that it feels like pay it feels like insanely choppy, and you can just see everywhere that got something cut out of it. And it is just really fastly and weirdly paced throughout the whole movie. 
And lastly, that cringy scene from the trailer where he talks or where he talks about that robber being being a turd blowing in the wind didn't happen the first time that it showed Eddie um, at that shop and he stole money because he didn't have the symbiote at that time. So for a second there, I thought that they luckily cut that scene out, but no, it ends up uh, happening at the at the very end. Uh, and also, Woody Harrelson's red curly wig is very fake and noticeable looking, so hopefully they fix that for the next movie. Um, if it even ends up happening, <laughs> The Amazing Spider-Man 4. Um, so yeah, overall, Venom was enjoyable and doesn't really slow down, and it is probably Sony's best attempt at the Spider-Man franchise, but they still don't have it. If you haven't seen Venom yet, I would recommend waiting until it comes out on physical media to rent it. So yeah, so very quick little review. Um, as you guys know, pretty much, I think if you wanted to see Venom, you've probably seen it, so it's not probably not, probably not too helpful. Um, but yeah, so those are both my reviews right there. Um, I was going to do my review for First Man. I really wanted to see that, um, and I was going to go see it for my birthday, uh, but we ended up not. We were going to see it like the next weekend. I completely forgot about it, and then um, of course my review, um, or my our theater, Great Falls, Montana Theater, uh, we're pretty darn lucky that we even got that movie in our theater. Um, so the fact that we even got it was lucky enough, but then um, it probably only stayed for like two or three weeks. Um, so yeah, so uh, I'm just going to rent that pretty much right when it comes out. Um, but yeah, so as of right now, um, that is pretty much it for that. So yeah, so let's just get on to the rest of the day vlog. Alright guys, so first off, um, I believe I talked about this in the last day vlog when I showed my drawing for Trench. Um, and at that time, I believe there was only four songs. I believe it was like, um, I believe it was like Jumpsuit, Levitate, um, My Blood, and, um, Nico and the Niners. Um, but yeah, so I was saying by the next day vlog, I would have the album, and I announced that I pre-ordered it. Um, so yeah, so I can't remember exactly when I got it. Um, I believe it was like a day or two after the full album came out. Um, but yeah, so I pre-ordered it, um, and as you'll see in a second, I pre-ordered it a while ago. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, to get something special with it. Um, but yeah, so, it came, um, and of course, um, you guys, have, I haven't even, like, gave my actual, like, review or talked about that album. But yeah, so the whole album, I mean, it's been out for a while. It came out October 5th, like, the full album. Um, but honestly, for a while, for about a week or so, I was saying that it was about tied with um, Blurry Face to be my favorite Tony and Pilots album, but honestly, I like, I like, at first I was saying like, man, some of these songs are just so long and like I didn't know about too much of them, but now it's just like, honestly, I kind of wish there's like more songs to the album, like, because I've, I've been listening to it every once in a while, um, while going to sleep and stuff, and like, it just seems like it goes by so fast, but the album is honestly just so good, like there's, like, because I mean, there, there's like, always like um like one song from every album by like all my favorite artists that is just like too slow and i just don't really like and i can't really get on to um and eventually i usually like them some of them just never end up like that way because one of them that i it did turn for me was um uh goner on blurry face i did not like that song um now i'm just like how did i not like this song this song is fine <laughs> um but uh yeah for this one, there's literally not, I mean, there's slow songs, but there's, like, they, they're just so good. Like, this album is honestly, like, perfect. I don't really see anything wrong with it. Um, of course, it's Twin Pilots. Pretty much, if it's a song, I mean, if it's, like, any, if you guys, um, look at my playlist, um, pretty much any, just about every single song by Twin Pilots, Basile, Portugal the Man, um, Eminem, uh, Gorillaz, uh, Melanie Martinez, Kendrick Lamar, Avicii, Fosh or Foster the People, pretty much any song by them I can almost listen to non-stop and never get, they never get old. But yeah, so here is the album. I didn't order any of those, like, fancy packs, uh, that came with, like, the album itself and the vinyl and the shirts and the bags, whatever. I just ordered the main album, um, because it was only, like, $10 and, like, $6 shipping or something like that, and it came with something else, which I'll show in a second. But here it is. Um, honestly, you guys know my only other CD that I at least have in my room. I showed the last day vlog, I believe. Um, Sacred Hearts Club by Foster the People. Um, and honestly, I didn't want too much of these because I thought I would just like listen to them just kind of when we're on trips. Um, and I'm not going to start collecting them. I'm just, I just kind of want to get a few more um, just because not only for trips, but also, again, like I was saying, I actually started listening to these um, when I'm like going to bed and everything. But, um, I might get a few more albums. If, honestly, like, I really want Wild World by, um, Basile. Um, 
and um and uh maybe um i kind of want blurry face I don't, I don't really know but yeah so i'll have to think about that um but uh yeah so but i got this so i am very very happy of course this cd is like the best one i've also ever seen like as um it's my of course first cd with the actual like slip cover um since i'm a movie collector i don't usually have the stuff with cds but yeah so i really love the slip cover as you can see in here it's like very matte colored and feeling um so yeah so really really nice slip cover and it's kind of weird because i was looking on the back for like the titles and stuff of the songs but they're actually all right there um so yeah so all 14 of them and yeah it just says torn pilots trench and the fpe thing i i thought um i don't know if it was just during the blurry face era or what but i thought that st stood for a few proud emotional uh but it says right here identified as failed perimeter escape uh, by it from Dima, um, so yeah, so, um, but unless if you're a huge Tornado Pilots fan, you probably don't really care or understand about all the, uh, storylines and stuff going in their albums, but yeah, so of course their new logo right there on the back, just really, really cool, even like the spine and everything, or the top part in the spines right there, and then underneath you, I mean, it's pretty much the same thing just with that, and then you got the cool, like, Nico and the Niners kind of, or trench kind of pattern right there, and then that's the back, and then opening it up, um, uh, you got the CD and slip and everything. So, of course, just like the um, Sacred Hearts Club one, you always have these, which is cool art and stuff showing all the songs. So, yeah, so this is um, Jumpsuit and Levitate right there. Of course, like the two of some of the bigger ones. Um, and then uh, Morph, and, um, uh, Morph and My Blood right there. Um, and then chlorine and smithereens uh and then neon gravestones and the hype and then just this cool art of josh dunn and tyler joseph with of course the skeleton click and the alien click right there um and then uh nico and the niners and cut my lip right there and then uh bandito and pachita and then legend and leave the city I believe that's it right there yeah, and then just all the stuff right there um so yeah and then just some cool art and everything with the vulture and all that um so yeah so i always i always really like those um it's just kind of some cool little art stuff and then the disc really really cool it's kind of like sparkly almost but uh yeah so we got that thing right there with the new logo and twin pilots that's kind of how all their discs always go um with their logo in the middle right there and everything and then you just got the kind of trench pattern carrying on right there um so yeah so i don't know if all dvd players or blu-ray players or whatever do this but um i can play cds on mine so i because my, my laptop doesn't have a cd drive um only our pc does and our uh bigger black laptop that i haven't used in like since i got my laptop uh but uh yeah so um and then um uh so yeah so that is that really really happy that i got that um, again, pretty much not a bad song. Um, still, My Blood, it was kind of growing on me when I was talking about it uh, last day vlog. Honestly, that is probably my favorite song of all time as of right now. Um, it has been for a while, and it's definitely my favorite song of that album. I just really, really love that song. Um, but yeah, so I'll, um, I'm pretty sure these just come with like any order that you get by um, any band merch that is their record is Field Bear Ramen. But yeah, so a giant Field Bear Ramen sticker. Um, of course, I haven't done anything with it right now. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I don't know what I'm going to do with that quite yet. It's just kind of been sitting here since I got it. But, yeah, you can be featured on their Instagram if you uh, show them your merch or whatever. Um, but, yeah, so the other thing that I was shown with this big is if you pre-ordered it before um, August 31st or August something, uh, you would get this patch. So, yeah, so, again, pre-ordered it a while ago. But um, it was a lot, honestly a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. I um, thought it was going to be a lot smaller. But uh, so yeah, so it's just a, a patch that says trench. Um, and I just put it right here um, with my uh, other stuff on my little corkboard strip here. But yeah, so pretty darn cool. It's a lot, uh, again, pretty darn big in the colors and everything. Just really cool to have something right there representing my favorite album by my favorite band right there. Um, and also just a little small thing, I replaced my drumstick right there, because, um, um, I'm actually doing my high set now, that's, that's one of the things that I was saying that's kind of big, um, but yeah, I, I pretty much, like, stopped high school, you guys know I was, um, just finished my sophomore year, and I was, I went to my first day of junior year, and I just kind of decided that I was 
done with all that. Um, it was a long story and a long process, but basically I'm doing my high set and all of a sudden I'm like all smart and stuff. And um, there was supposed to be like a whole thing and I was supposed to be getting done in May, which is, that's already pretty crazy because I mean, I still had like two years in public school. Um, but yeah, so supposed to be like getting done in May with like learning labs and stuff. It's only two hours a day, Monday through Thursday. Um, but I just like, she just put me on a practice test the first day and you just have to pass two practice tests and then you can take like the final test for that. And then once you take those five final tests, you can get your high set and you still have a graduation with like cap and gown and stuff. Um, and they said that now that like, I literally have all my practice tests done and stuff. So I will actually be like fully graduating. No joke. I believe November 19th or something like that. That's insane. I mean, by the time you guys are watching this, that's literally in like 10 days or something. So that's insane. So how that has to do anything with this is because I actually just got new drumsticks for this year because my old ones were looking like they're about to snap or something. Um, as you can see here, these are like my old ones. It's all faded and everything. So I just took one of the new pairs. Um, you can see my other new one is right there. This is a drumstick that I replaced. Um, just because it doesn't look as good, and it's just not one that I would actually use. Um, but yeah, so I just have those in there because I don't know if I'll really be using them too much. Um, but yeah, so honestly, it did really kind of suck because I mean, it's uh, I mean, I only had two years left, but the only reason like I was talking to like um, some people and stuff, but like my mom and dad also understand that like. The only reason I was really staying, or that I only really wanted to be in school, was for the movie classes with Mr. Wiles and stuff, um, and band. Those are really the only reasons I care whatsoever to be there. And, like, doing, like, if you guys get your high set, it's supposed to be a diploma, um, equivalency. So if you guys just do that, it's, I mean, it, you have to be 17, so that was also the thing I was kind of lucky, is, like, um, I would have had to wait until May. To graduate but since my birthday is october 23rd i could start i could start taking tests right away and um now i can be graduated right away that's insane um so yeah so i could pretty much be done of course my graduation year was gonna be awesome 2020 my class ring so it says 2020 on it um but i mean i still love my class ring of course i have ocd so 20 20 on one side and 20 on one side very symmetrical and nice i really love that <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so I guess now my graduation year is technically 2018. Um, so yeah, so, um, also I'm not paying, or, uh, I, I don't want to make my parents or anything pay like $500 for senior pictures. You guys know I'm a photographer, so I'm, I might, um, I don't know if I will, but pretty sure I'm just going to take my, uh, senior pictures by myself. It's going to be pretty darn surprising because what most of my family knows um, but some of my friends are going to be like, what? Like, I haven't really had anyone ask me, like, why I'm not there or whatever. Um, but th they'll be very surprised when they're just like, what do you mean, senior? Um, so yeah, so that's that. That's a very big life update thing. Um, but yeah, so that is that. Next up to what I was saying about, um, Taco is, of course, a while ago we actually got his ashes back. Um, it was a very nice little set, actually, because it, it had his ashes, and then they actually included this little uh, mini envelope with a lock of his hair, which the, we didn't even know that was coming, and it had his paw print, printed on it with, like, ink or whatever. That made me and my mom, like, oh, cry even more. <laughs> like, um, I don't really want to talk about, like, the day that he actually did go. Like, that was one of the hardest days of my life, honestly, and that whole day, we it was so hard, but, yeah, so... This is right here. He is, I mean, you guys know, pretty much for almost the last year of his life, he slept with me. So now, I mean, he's always hanging above me um, in one way or another. Um, uh, and he's just always there now. So this is uh, my little capsule of some of his ashes. It's just got a little paw print on it and the little capsule right there. Um, and it's not just in there, so if it comes unscrewed, don't worry, he won't just, uh, pour onto me there or whatever. Um, there's a little, another mini capsule inside of it, and then it has a little paw print right there. But it was really good, because you guys know this last Christmas I also made, um, a salt dough, um, ornament with his paw pressed into it. So I think that's really good, um, and yeah, and of course, you guys know from day vlogs and stuff, all the pictures and videos, um, basically, I don't know if I ever talked about it, but this whole time... I had a folder on my heart, one of my hard drives, with every single picture and video that I took of him just um, for that video because I wasn't like anticipating it, but when it did finally come to that time, um, I wanted to make that video as good as I could. 
and that's what I did. So yeah, so a lot of those pictures, I know there's a lot of repeats on that video on accident. Um, but yeah, so you guys just know, um, you might have seen a lot of those pictures and videos before, but that's what it's all been coming to was that video. Um, of course, that's not all the pictures and videos. Some of them have been lost, um, and there's some videos um, that we just don't have or whatever I couldn't find because um, we've had them since 2010. Um, but yeah, so moving on, um, is this uh, a new drawing? I believe my only new drawing for this time, but um, it's another portrait because my dad really wanted to see another portrait kind of drawing like I did um, for still my best drawing on um, the Deadpool one right there. Um, and the, like, Iron Man one right there and everything. Um, so, yeah. So, I did my third one right here, which is Venom. Of course, I didn't love the movie too much. But, I mean, I wanted to draw a Venom portrait kind of drawing. So, I did the shading right there, as I always do. And then I do did the Venom logo like it is on the movie. So, that's really cool. cool kind of like the cool uh, liquid metal kind of look with the red shading behind it and the Venom face signature. And then I kind of did it like the Iron Man one a little bit more, but a little messy um, since it's Venom. So yeah, so you can see Tom Hardy actually right there with like the Venom all kind of splatted all over his face and everything. And his hoodie kind of coming out right there too. So yeah, so really good looking right there. Um, and then Venom, you can see I put all of his little gray veins and everything in his teeth. In his eyes, I even put kind of the reflection of some of the city lights on his eyes. And um, yeah, just a lot of shading and everything. Overall, I mean, it's pretty darn good. It's not my best one, but I mean, it's pretty much just as good as I was hoping it was going to turn out. Um, and his teeth, I even put little scrapes on there, which you might barely be able to see there. But yeah, so, pretty darn cool drawing. I like it quite a bit. Um, and, um, yeah, so, um, yeah, so that is pretty much it for all of that. Um, so now... If you guys are wondering what the heck this stuff is on my floor, um, I actually got these a while ago. This was literally the day, um, that we decided, I think it was, like, the day where we were talking about the high set at, um, the alternative high school here. Um, and that was, I mean, that was, like, two or three months ago. So, <laughs> that just shows you right there how long it's been since I did the last day vlog. But these, um, my mom, I think for, like, $20, she got, she found, like, two vintage cameras. You guys know I love I, one of my passions in life is like photography and uh, uh, cinematography and all that stuff and cameras and all that, everything. Um, so my mom found two vintage cameras from, uh, from this one guy for like twenty dollars, and she ended up getting like four for fifty or something like that. Um, so yeah, so basically why these are on my floor still is because I still have no idea where I'm gonna put them. Um, I will update you guys when I figure out where to put them, kind of my display. But um, yeah, so basically going over all four of these real quick. Um, first off, probably my most favorite one out of all these, it is a Super 8 camera. You guys know there's like a whole movie made about these, um, it's like a sci-fi one, maybe J.J. Abrams and all that. But this is the camera that pretty much started Steven Spielberg. He used to make films and stuff, um, with these. Um, it's a lot heavier than I thought in real life. Um, so yeah, so, but you can see it actually says movie 8 camera right there. Um, the lens cap comes off, I'm not gonna take it off. Um, but yeah, it kind of just unscrews with that little cap right there. And then you can just manually zoom by using this little lever right there, which you can see is zooming it right there. Um, a little eyepiece right there. Uh, this is the little thing, the, le the lever that you actually push this trigger on this pistol grip type thing. Um, and you can see it actually pushes that thing in right there to film it. And you actually have to wind it up, so this little lever kind of comes out. And um, you actually wind it up just like this, and um, I don't know if there's film in there or not, I don't, me and my dad couldn't really figure out, um, my dad's pretty much, I believe, had to like all these cameras throughout his life, but um, I don't know if it's jammed or what, but we cannot figure out how to open this, so I don't know if there's any film in there, and I've been filming this whole time or what, um, but uh, yeah, so basically, you just wind it up like that and put that back, and then you can hear it right here when I put, press the trigger. wind it up for quite a while there um but yeah so that's how you do it basically um and as you can see like when you wind it up you um you don't have to hold it down the whole time you can also like stop and stuff so yeah so um of course i'm not gonna i do actually kind of want to like film oh, um i do actually kind of like want to film with this and everything um, and kind of um i think there's some place that you can probably get it like digitally produced or whatever so i can like uh, actually film something with that because that would be really cool honestly I think 
Um, but, uh, yeah, so, that'd be very cool. Um, but, yeah, so then it's just this little strap here. Um, but, yeah, so that's my favorite one, honestly. Um, next one is a little Polaroid. Of course, it's not like the Polaroid you guys all know. Um, I didn't know if this was actually working. We figured out the hard way in the car, um, because I just pushed the button after opening the slot, and then I was just like, whoa, did that just flash? My dad was like, yo. <laughs> and so it just, like, flashed. My dad was like that. So, luckily, we didn't, like, fly off a bridge or something. Um, so, yeah, so the strap was kind of broken. The Velcro, I fixed it with super glue. Um, but, yeah, so... Um, our Target started selling, like, regular, like, well, classic vintage Polaroid type things with cartridges, but, um, they don't have any size for this, so, um, I do want to take some pictures with this at some point, because they're kind of cool, they hang up and stuff, um, but we're gonna have to, like, look on Amazon to get the right size or whatever, but basically, if you push this, um, kind of just opens that, you have to push it back to close it, um, back up, but, uh, yeah, so basically, it just opens like that and then that the big old bright yellow button is how do you take the pictures but it's like that so you guys all know how it looks it's called a polaroid spectre 2 um and then how you open the cartridge is um you actually push this little lever down and that opens that um and that's where you would put the little um the little paper slides right um on top of that metal piece there and um yeah basically that's, well, that's what i was talking about when i opened it you do that and it does that whatever that means um, and then you can take the picture. I don't know why it's not flashing right now, but yeah, so I don't know how to do it. I didn't want to aim it at my camera because I don't want to flash messing it up or whatever. Um, but uh, yeah, so I did that. So hopefully I can get that figured out at some point. Um, the next one is an even older Polaroid. It has a little strap right here. Um, it's actually like a little fold-out case, a little viewing eyepiece right there, um, the little two button right there, Polaroid 210. Basically, once you open this thing, um, there's this little metal thing holding down uh, these instructions or whatever they are, which are made out of metal for some reason. Um, but basically, it's called a LAN camera. Um, I don't know how the heck you're supposed to, like, you have to hold this thing because you can't really, like, mount it anywhere with that. Um, but yeah, so basically, it's it's not one of, like, the old 1800s camera or early 1900s cameras or whatever. Um, but it's, it's like, kind of looks like one. Um, cause it's like all the fold out like fabric type ones, but there's actually like steps to opening this up and everything. Um, basically there's like numbered things. There's like got one and one and then two right there and then, um, three and then four right there. Um, there's a lot of stuff to it, but basically when you push that three lever down, it kind of stays down a little bit. Um, but then when you push these forward, um, and down a little bit, uh, you can actually go ahead and open this up, I think. So yeah, so when you actually go and push these little levers up, um, you can see it just popped open and it actually unfolds. Try not to get my fingers pinched, but the, uh, then it just kind of clicks into place there. And um, yeah, there's wires and you can see it's like that and it looks like a super old camera now. Um, so yeah, so that's really, really cool when it's like that. Only bad thing is like, I mean, could say it's like that but then it kind of folds in and stuff so I, I don't really know i mean i guess it could be like that or whatever but yeah um and then the back opens up right th right there and everything um uh but uh yeah so pretty darn cool right there definitely one of the more cool looking ones um and then um to actually put it back in you have to like push these up at the same or you have to press this top you have to press this top bar down right there um, and then close it. it. Took me a while to figure out. My dad couldn't figure it out, um, so I was just messing with it for like half an hour until I finally figured out how to open and close that. Uh, but then the last one comes in this big old leather case right there, um, and uh, yeah. So, but unzipping that, it is nice and uh, wooly looking in there. Um, but yeah, so this is a pretty big one here. Um, so yeah, so there's a little uh, booklet in there um, explaining the like the instruction booklet and everything. But yeah, so this is a Kodak Colorburst 250 um, instant camera. So yeah, electronic flash, and then you got the little logo right there. But yeah, so that is the front of it right there, and then the back with the eyepiece and everything, um, and the super cool sliding out flash thing there. Um, yeah, so it even shows the flash range right on it, four to ten feet. Um, so yeah, so then then. Basically, um, there's an actual tripod mount right there, um, and then the batteries go in right there, um, and someone's, like, social security number is, 
uh, <laughs> engraved right there. Um, I don't know if that was a previous owner that we bought it from or what, but luckily you guys probably can't see that. Um, but, uh, so yeah, so this one, um, I can't, oh yeah, there we go. So yeah, so it's kind of like the other one. Um, I imagine that's where you put in the slides and everything. But, uh, yeah, so nothing too much about this one either. Um, but, uh, yeah, so that is pretty much it for all of the, those. Um, they're very, very cool. Of course, I don't know if I will ever use any of them. Um, some of them I don't, I just think can flat out not be used. Um, but some of them, uh, some of them I just need to get the cartridges for. So I think some of, like the other Polaroid one, I will be able to use at some point. I just need to get the right cartridges for it. Um, so yeah, so I will get on to the next thing real quick after I take care of this little guy. Look at him go. It's a very, very small one. But, um, uh, the, I haven't checked the other two traps around the room. But you guys know I am always filling bug traps like crazy here in my cave. Um, but this one is a trap from about, I've showed my other ones, but this one is the, uh, trap for about the past three months, I believe. Um, so yeah, so, got a nice little collection in there. Um, yeah, the spiders are getting a lot bigger. We're getting a lot more female ones in here. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so, take care of that little guy, uh, I don't know where he just ran off to, we'll find him, and we'll be right back. <laughs> Alright guys, so I found him, took care of him, um, so yeah, so now on to the last thing for this day vlog, um, which is my update movie poster collection, and I have watched a couple others that I haven't added yet, so on the next day vlog, um, there will most, um, there will be a poster up uh, for, um, you guys know, Sicario, really like the first one. Um, but my, I've really want, been wanting to see the second one, um, and we haven't been renting it, uh, but my dad watched it at work, um, during his, like, break time with some of his friends and stuff, um, so I really wanted to rent it, and we did, and, um, I honestly liked it better than the first one, it was definitely a lot more entertaining, I would say the first one had a lot, um, I'm, I'm gonna show the movie poster, I'm gonna make, like, kind of just a, a dual one, kind of like that, um, with this one, but, um, I'll just talk about it now. Um, since I already saw it, but yeah, so next day vlog, there will be a poster, um, like right here, but with Sicario and Sicario Day of the Salt Auto. Um, but yeah, so, first one, um, it was directed by a very good, um, director that's coming, just kind of new-ish. Um, I mean, he directed Sicario, Blade Runner 2049, probably better than the first one, honestly. Um, and, um, a few others. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so, oh yeah, and Arrival. Um, uh... But, uh, yeah, so the second one wasn't directed by him, so I, I think the first one had a lot better of a directing style, and, like, you could definitely tell it was in a lot more of a filmmaker's hands, I think. Uh, but the second one was a lot more entertaining, I'd say, and definitely a lot more, um, just a little more, it wasn't, like, as, I, I, I don't know if it was, like, as gritty or not, um, but it was around there. Um, and probably a poster for the uh, the Green Mile and um, Un Unforgiven, um, and I'll talk about those next day vlog. But for as of right now, some new movie posters, just a few new ones here. American Psycho, I've been wanting to see it for a while. Um, one of um, I can't even remember uh, Christian Bale. One of Christian Bale's more creepy movies. My mom what my mom just happened to watch it a few days before I watched it, and um, I was watching it and she was just like, "Oh man, you're actually watching that." Um, so yeah, so. Uh, it just says killer looks on it, but yeah, so Christian Bale in that movie is terrifying, just how he talks and everything, and, um, yeah, if you guys seen that movie, it's very, um, inappropriate and violent and graphic, um, but, uh, yeah, so, a lot more than I thought it was going to be, but honestly, like, especially at the end when they are, um, I don't really want to spoil it for you, but, um, when that, when, when it gets revealed, um, uh, and all that, but yeah, so that was pretty surprising, and, um, didn't see that coming too much. I thought it was all actually happening and all that. But yeah, so pretty terrifying movie right there. Uh, next up, Children of Men. Uh, my film teacher recommended it along with like Eternal Sunshine and Spotless Mind and uh, her and all that. Uh, just movies that are like kind of, uh, I believe, fantastic realism. Kind of like um, they could be real, but they're not. And yeah. Uh, but yeah, so it's basically, um, I mean, it has Clive Owen, Julianne Moore, Michael Caine, um, all those. But yeah, Children of Men, it's about, like, um, where there's, like, the, the youngest child on Earth got murdered, and, um, like, if you saw a, ch a child, like, because, like, females stopped, like, being able to, like, have children and stuff, um, so it's kind of like a post-apocalyptic, I guess, um, because there's, like, hu the human race is kind of going, 
uh, extinct. And then it just like all of a sudden like the they're they um this one woman has a baby, um and they're trying to keep it a secret. And then all of a sudden like this whole war breaks out. And it just goes insane. So yeah, so that movie was pretty darn good. It was very intense and kind of creepy, but um and also pretty sad at some points. But that was pretty crazy. Um, Mother, oh man. Um, <laughs> it's directed by Darren Aronofsky, um, a very controversial director. He also directed Black Swan, which I have not seen, but I want to. Um, because a lot of people compare it to Whiplash, although Whiplash was a lot less terrifying than Black Swan, I've heard. Because I've seen the transition scene on Black Swan, at least. Um, but I've been wanting to see this movie. From the trailer, it kind of just looked like a more generic, uh, horror movie, but a little better, at least. But holy cow, it has Jennifer Lauren... Yeah, <laughs> uh, hard voice crack right there. Um, but as Jennifer Lawrence and Javier Bardem, Javier Bardem's always like really creepy. I mean, I haven't seen the new parts of the Caribbean, um, but the first movie I saw him on was um, one of the Best Picture winners, uh, No Country for Old Men, where he's a creepy, weird hairdo uh, man that uses a gun that like kills people by shooting air. Um, so yeah, so on this one. Basically, it, I mean, it's about, like, a guy who, like, invites these, like, he's, like, an author, and he invites, like, these two people in, or this, um, this man that was supposedly lost. They live in, like, the middle of nowhere in, like, a mansion and stuff, and, um, it starts off with, like, just a scene of, like, the house, like, burning with a field, and, like, she's, her face is on fire and stuff. Um, so, yeah, he invites him in, and then all of a sudden his wife, just, like, the most, like, cocky, just annoying person on earth, comes in, just starts being a jerk to, um, his wife, played by Jennifer Lawrence, um, and then all of a sudden, like, they break this, like, like, uh, the, um, Javier Bardem's his, like, his room of, like, where he wrote his books, and, like, he had, like, this most prized possession, which was just this weird-looking crystal thing, um, and he said, like, if he, if anybody broke it, like, it, stuff would happen, um, basically, and they ended up breaking, and he, like, just threw, I mean, he, like, kicked him out, and they ended up staying in anyway. they just went into the, one of the bedrooms down below, and just started having intercourse for some reason, I have no idea, um, and then all of a sudden, the next shot, he's, like, has the crystal, the shattered crystals in his hand, he's just crushing it, there's, like, blood going everywhere, um, and then all of a sudden after that, everything just starts going insane. <laughs> I don't even know what I was watching. Like, then the his biggest fan, the old man that was supposedly dying, all of a sudden his two sons, or one of his sons comes in, and he's, like, talking about how his other son um, is, like, uh, getting after him again and everything, and he's mad that he's, like, not helping, his the dad's not helping them him out with his um, financial difficulties. Then they come in and start just having, like, a brotherly fight. It ends up being, like, a full-on, like dad gets involved and it's just like they go around the whole house like they just arrived at this like these two strangers house and then all of a sudden they're like taking their furniture smacking each other into it and they're like one of the brothers ends up getting murdered um as the dad tries saving him he ends up like killing the dad pretty much um but then he ends up being safe um, and the dad ends up living, but then one of the sons ends up dying, and the other guy just, like, breaks into the house later on. Um, and it's Jennifer Lawrence at home alone while the others are at the hospital, and then he's, like, in their house still. And then after that, like, they have, like, a, all of a sudden, they're just, like, Javier Bardem just keeps on saying, like, everything will be fine. And she's, like, trying to work on the house and making it all nice, and, like, and she's just, like, um, the other person talks her into having a baby, and then so she's just like, oh, okay. Um, and so she's planning all this stuff, and then everybody just, like, comes in, starts wrecking everything, and then she, like, she just keeps on telling her that it will be fine, and then they have, like, a whole funeral party, and then, like, they, like, the next thing you know, they, like, she has the baby, and then he opens the door, and there's, like, a whole city outside of his fans or something, and just because he, like, released a book that they've been waiting for for a couple years, and then all of a sudden, like, I don't even know, <laughs> They go downstairs and he has a baby and she's like telling him not to let the his fans see the baby and then all of a sudden like I don't know where like they start sitting on bench like the sink that she just fixed they break the sink water starts spraying everywhere and then all of a sudden people are just like for no apparent reason just tearing apart the house like they're tearing the walls off floorboards out of the floor they're like throwing molotovs and junk they're like just killing each other and then all of a sudden like a SWAT team shows up and the house explodes and like 
I don't like I don't even know if I should be laughing about this like it was a serious movie but it was like what was even going on like I was watching with my mom and dad and like they stay awake the whole time and it, it honestly guys if you just haven't seen mother like oh my god like that was honestly like the most disturbing and most just what on earth am I watching movie I've ever seen um honestly I'd recommend it but um if you're not a huge fan of like violence or uh religious stuff probably not um because a lot of people are actually mad at it it is a pretty controversial movie um so yeah so a lot of people will not treat it as a joke um a lot of people say it's actually a metaphor for like jesus and god and all that because um because like the abraham and i can't remember the other guy's name were like the two brothers how they ended up murdering each other and then like basically god made like he like uh created mother nature to make everything perfect and then if something gets wrecked then everything just all goes horrible until he has to restart it because yeah basically what happens I, I mean she has the baby and then all of a sudden she like they have a stirring contest basically because she doesn't trust Javier, uh, Javier Bardem anymore and then all of a sudden she ends up falling asleep next thing you know she wakes up and he's bringing his the baby out to give to her his riding fans and like this temple with his people guarding their room and then all of a sudden like she's just going out there and yelling give me back my baby and then like all of a sudden you just hear the baby's neck snap or something and so they end up killing the baby and then she stabs him i mean rightfully so and then they just start beating the heck out of her and i i, I don't even know like they just all turned on her and then he said that i was sorry and then she just like has had enough by that point so she like goes down to like the where the whatever like the house has been like a beating heart has been in the walls and stuff and there's like blood going everywhere and all that she goes down to like the blood and the beating heart and stuff in the basement um it's like this coliseum basement type type of place um and she just ends up blowing up the whole house and that's what the flaming thing was and then all of a sudden like she's just like this burnt like little corpse and then javier bardem just reaches in and like grabs out her heart and she says like she has one more gift to give or whatever and then basically it just ends with like a kind of cgi different version of jennifer lawrence and she like wakes up and says something i can't really remember but yeah, so basically he just restarted. So every time that heart gets broken, he just like riot, riots and chaos breaks loose until he has to restart. Um, so yeah, so um, honestly, I can kind of see how it is a metaphor for the Bible and stuff. It's just insane. Uh, so yeah, so finally moving on from that, I could talk about the movie all day. Um, but yeah, so Chinatown, I've been wanting to see it for a while. Jack Nicholson, Faye Dunaway, um, pretty darn good crime uh, uh, thriller movie. Um, from a while ago, it says on video cassette. Um, but yeah, so Chinatown, pretty darn good. Not too much to say about that. Um, but like the ending, it was pretty tragic actually. Um, and then Shutter Island, um, I watched it a long time ago. I don't, I really don't remember anything about it because I watched it a very long time ago. Um, but finally watched it again. Um, yeah, it's Leonardo DiCaprio, uh, Mark Ruffalo. Um, but yeah, so. Really, really liked that movie. I mean, it was pretty darn good and entertaining the whole way through, and it was a pretty long movie. Um, but yeah, and it's also just a really kind of creepy and terrifying movie. And then at the end, when you decide that, like, really, it's just it's just him that's the psychopath that's been missing um, from the mental hospital and mental island, Shutter Island. Um, and basically, he's just been making up this whole story, and all of his like kind of doctors have just been going along with it and everything. Pretty darn insane. Uh, so yeah, so that is it for all that and I believe for this day vlog um, So yeah, so not too much for this day vlog for not doing one forever, uh, but uh, yeah, so um, But I don't I can't remember what all is going to be in the intro But yeah, so overall that is pretty much it for this day vlog make sure to stay out for or watch out for the next one whenever that will be um, And um, yeah, but as of right now that's pretty much it. So make sure to like subscribe. I'll see y'all later. Bye